What's up folks, it's Dave here from Profitable Tools and we're back with another new product review. Today I'm looking at WP Social Ninja. This is a new WordPress plugin from the folks at WP Manage Ninja who have a solid track record over the last few years of putting out some high quality plugins like Fluent Forms, Fluent SMTP, Ninja Tables and Fluent CRM. Now WP Social Ninja has three primary features. First of all, it can display your social media feeds from places like Instagram and Twitter right on your website. The second feature is the ability to display reviews from third party platforms like Amazon or Google My Business. Once again, putting those reviews from trusted third party sites right on your website so your customers can see reviews linked off to legitimate sites when they're shopping for your products. And the last feature is the ability to add a chat widget on your site that's connected to a social platform like Facebook or WhatsApp so that you can chat with visitors when they're on your site and automatically connect with them on social media. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating and reviewing only the social media feeds feature. I have two other videos that are going to be released that will demonstrate each of the other features, both customer reviews and the chat widget. So make sure you get subscribed to the channel if you haven't already. Turn on that notification bell so you don't miss it when those videos come out. Now, before we get started with this review, I do need to disclose that I'm an affiliate for this product, but this is not a sponsored review. My opinions are genuine. They're never influenced by third parties. I work for you folks. I'm here to help you find the best products for your business, not the software companies. All right, so with that said, let's get started with a demo of the social feeds feature. So I'm very excited to show you a first look at the social feeds feature inside of WP Social Ninja. Now, the idea here is obviously you can connect one of your social media accounts, display that information on your website. Currently, it's only supporting Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. A little bit later on, we're gonna get Facebook as well. But let's go ahead and get connected here. Now, I do wanna point out that connecting to any of these three services is going to be very similar. You're gonna need an account with them and then you'll authenticate. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect up to Twitter here because it's nice and fast and very simple. So under Twitter configuration, I'm just gonna click this blue button and it's gonna ask me to log into my Twitter account. All right, I'm gonna click sign in. And just like that, I am redirected back over to my WordPress website and my account is connected. Now, if I had multiple accounts, I could log out of Twitter. So maybe open another tab here, go over to Twitter, log out, and then I could repeat the process again. If you're not logged out, it's gonna try to re-authenticate that same account. So you'll wanna make sure you log out before you do that again. You can add as many accounts as you like here, and then you'll be able to display that information inside of your template. That's the next option, is to add a new template here. So here you go, we've got a nice display of my tweets. I'm not a active tweeter. As you can see, I have not really tweeted much in the last year, but that's not the point of this video. I wanna show you how this all works. So we really have two components to the template. We've got the data that's coming in from Twitter, and then we also have how it appears on our website. The default look, the default appearance is very much just like being on Twitter itself, right? You can see this literally looks like Twitter. We're gonna be able to stylize this a little bit more later on, but right now let's start by shaping the data that's actually coming in. Over in the right-hand sidebar here, I can choose the source of the data. Right now it's coming from the user timeline profitable tool, which is the handle that I've got on Twitter. Now I could change this. I could change it to be Elon Musk and hit fetch tweets, and it's gonna pull in information from Elon Musk. That's super cool. I could go ahead and display that on my new website, what's elonsayingnow.com, and there you can keep up with Elon without having to actually visit Twitter. That's not the point of this plugin though, just showing you some of the possibilities. I could also show you my home timeline. That's the people that I'm following on the Profitable Tools account, which I'm not actually sure if we're following anyone, but yeah, here you go. We got some Publer uh, links. So uh, only three followers there, only following three. But uh, that's the idea is that you could curate a list of people you find very interesting and then display that to your audience as well. But the options, of course, do not end there. We can also follow things like hashtags. Uh, as an example, I could do uh, hashtag iOS 15, which came out today as of the recording of this video. And here is what people are saying about iOS 15. All right, so this is gonna automatically update as new tweets come out and then people visit the page on your website, it will update to display the most relevant tweets. Of course, you can also sort by mentions. So this is gonna be people who have at mentioned your account on Twitter. You go ahead and search for those tweets and display them to your customers. You can see what other people are saying about you online. Really, really helpful. 
For now, let's go back to the user timeline and let's start to sort the data a little bit differently. To do that, I'm gonna skip over the template section. We'll come back to that, but let's go to filters right now. This is where I can start to sort the data that I've already got. So for example, let's say I wanted to find all of the tweets from Elon that mentioned Dragon, which is one of the spacecraft that SpaceX has designed. I can go ahead and search for Dragon right here. I can use either a hashtag or just a word. Uh, so I'm gonna type in Dragon, hit return. It's gonna filter out all of the tweets or filter out only the tweets that include Dragon. Now we could also do the same thing in reverse. I could hide posts that contain dragons. Let's say, you know, maybe there's a certain topic you want hidden from your timeline, something political or something like that. You don't want it to show up to your customers. Very easy to do so here. Simply type in the word hit enter and now the timeline shows up, but that tweet about dragon is missing. The next set of options I wanna cover is starting to blur the line between styling and sorting the data. Here we're simply going to be hiding elements of the tweet itself. Let's say I don't want the avatar image to display. I can get rid of that. The display username, I can get rid of that. The date, the Twitter logo, the tweet text, the reply action, the retweet action, the like action. You can see we can end up with literally nothing left. So let's turn these all back on. But if there's an element here that you don't like, sure enough, you can definitely hide it. That brings me to the next section, which is this header section right here. You might've already guessed, I can definitely turn that off as well. If I only wanna get rid of the banner image, there's option for that. I could also get rid of the number of tweets, accounts that are being followed, and the number of followers. This big follow button is so important, it gets its own section right over here. I can turn that off. Now, interacting with the tweets is just gonna link you up over to Twitter. So if I click on the reply button here, it's gonna pop open Twitter and I can go ahead and reply to Elon right there. If I hit the play button, it's gonna play it right in line, no problem. All right, now let's go back to the template section. If you remember, I skipped this earlier. So right now we're looking at the standard template. There are two other templates we can check out. We've got the masonry template, which is gonna go ahead and put everything in a masonry grid. And then we also have a carousel where everything will show up in you know, a certain number of columns. And we can go ahead and go through the different pages here. It will also auto scroll. When I switch to the carousel layout, a, another section displays down here called carousel, which will allow me to further stylize this section so I can change the autoplay speed and get rid of the navigation. Maybe I wanna show four slides at a time. I can do that as well. I think this is looking pretty good. I just wanna change a few things before putting it on the footer of my website. The first thing I wanna change is I wanna make all of the tweets equal height. So I'm gonna to go to feed settings here and there's an option for that. I'm gonna turn that on. Next thing I'm gonna do is get rid of these arrows here. I just don't really care for them. So under carousel, I'm gonna go ahead and change the navigation to be none. So now that I've got the template looking the way that I want, all that's left to do is to copy the short code and then I can put that anywhere I want on my website. I could put it in the sidebar, I could put it in the footer, or I could embed it right in line with my content. It works with the Gutenberg editor. It also works with any page builder. So simply go ahead and open up the page you wanna edit, put in that short code, and you're gonna be good to go. Here is the homepage for this demo site. Let's go ahead and edit this with Elementor and I can simply drop in the short code anywhere I want the tweets to appear. So I'm at the bottom of the page here. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new section. Let's make it a full width section here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just add in an element in Elementor called shortcode. You could do this, like I said, using any page builder. They're all gonna support shortcodes. It's an important part of the WordPress experience. I'll paste in the template. Now, right away, it's gonna look terrible. Don't worry. This is just how it renders in Elementor. It's not a uh, WP Manage Ninja problem, it's more of an Elementor problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the changes here, hit update. While I load up this page, I'll mention that there's no styling options for the widget once you get outside of the plugin itself or you're changing the style and making things look right. So if you see I scroll down here far enough, there we go, here are the tweets that I just went ahead and embedded on the page. It's actually not full width, uh, that was my fault, that's how I set it up. There we go, changes to full width, just to show you that it sure will work here. Again, it renders really funny inside of the Elementor browser, but as I go visit the actual page, it's gonna display appropriately. There we go. So that is the Twitter feed and how you get it up on your website. The same thing applies if you're trying to add YouTube or Instagram to your website. It's gonna be a very similar process. Here's what some of the YouTube feeds might look like. We could do a, a specific playlist, add specific videos, have a video search. You can have just your live streams show up. I really love that idea so that you can have upcoming live streams. People know to go to your website to see where the live streams are. We can have pop-ups so that when you click on a video, it shows up in a nice little window. And once again, the carousel returns for YouTube. 
And here is what the Instagram feeds look like. You can sort the data by user account or hashtag. And then the layouts look like a grid, a slider, or a masonry layout, just like we saw over on Twitter. All right, there you go. Now you've seen this feature in action. Now here's what I actually think. Let's start off with the pros. Now, if you need to get social media content onto your website, WP Social Ninja makes it pretty dead simple. You just log into your account, you filter the data, and then boom, you're in. You're ready to display it to your customers. You can manage the refresh rate in the settings. I didn't mention that in the demo, but you can go in and you can change how often that gets refreshed so that you make sure you always have current data showing up. This is really nice because then your website is always up to date with at least whatever you've been tweeting or Instagramming last. I also like that the widget is fast. When you put that short code on your page, it doesn't add any noticeable page load time. I'm sure it's adding a few milliseconds here or there, but it's definitely not slowing down my website. It fits right into the flow of the page very easily. I'm fairly impressed. Now, when it comes to the cons, I think the first place to look is utility. Now, I'm speaking specifically about embedding social media content on your website. Personally, I'd think twice about actually doing this. Now, I wanna point out that the other features of this plugin, which are covered in videos that are coming later, or they may have already been published, check down below for links. I think those other features are actually much more compelling. Now, that's not to say that this feature is useless, but generally, social media content is kind of a top of the funnel piece of content, right? We're trying to get people from social media over to your website where you can get them to opt into your email list or maybe just make a sale outright. I think once you start kind of getting people back into an infinite loop, we could get into some actual conversion rate issues here. Now, the way that I'd recommend actually using this is displaying social media content on your site that showcases what other people are saying about your brand online. So it functions as social proof, a lot like reviews. That is a lot better than just showcasing your latest tweet storm from the last episode of The Bachelor. Of course, unless that's your thing, whatever works for your brand. I think just most people in general will do better off keeping social media on social media and using that to leverage traffic over to their website. So utility aside, I do have a few other things I'd like to see added to this specific feature. I'd selfishly like to see a way to bring YouTube videos in as posts. This way you could convert your videos into full length articles over time, but at least the video will have a post on your site as soon as the video is published or whenever the plugin refreshes. Next up from a user experience point of view, I think this is actually one of WP Managed Ninja's weaknesses, something that they should improve in over time. It's just the organization of data on the screen. There's often too much available to you at one time. I'd prefer to see them have dedicated screens for things like filtering out data and shaping the tweets or the Instagram posts as they come in, and then a second screen where we can choose the layout and design. I think it makes even more sense long-term thinking to bake the layout and design elements into a Gutenberg block and an Elementor widget. I'd start with those two. You're gonna have almost every website on WordPress covered, and it's what people expect when they go to style their website. But that's not how this product functions, so I think it's unlikely that they will change the layout features. At a minimum, I'd like to see them at least reorganize the menu structure so that it's a little bit more logical. For example, show me the options to customize the carousel in the same section where I actually turn the carousel on. Don't make me then search at the bottom of the screen for a magical settings that appear only when the carousel is turned on. I think that is a little bit confusing in terms of the UI. And why does the follow button have its own section? We can really condense things, think about how users would be sorting data and then styling the plugin. Again, maybe just better to segment this into two separate screens. Overall, this is a product with a ton of mainstream appeal, so I'd love to see the UX get even easier to understand. But first, remember that this is a brand new product and everything works out of the box as it's described. And when was the last time that really happened? We've kind of become accustomed to half-baked products shipping. This one is fully there from all that I can tell. So remember, I've only covered one out of three features in this video. If you're interested in learning more about WP Social Ninja, stay tuned to this channel. I'll be adding videos for the other two features very shortly. They'll be linked down below when they're available. Otherwise, make sure you just get subscribed right now so you don't miss anything new that comes out. If you wanna grab a copy of WP Social Ninja, I'll have a link down below. That'll be my referral link. So it helps support reviews like this one. I try to do unbiased, genuine reviews for you guys. 
tell you what I really think. If you want to connect further with me, you can find me on social media. I have some links down below. I also have a free weekly newsletter. You can sign up. I send out just one email a week. I will never spam you. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out one of my other videos. There'll be links somewhere over there or over here or something like that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.